A developer automated the process in the robotic enterprise framework using Orchestrator Q, in which state is the status updated to successful for each transaction item from the queue. Um, well, there's only one activity that do that in the framework, and that is the set transaction status activity. And you can find that activity within the process transaction only. Let me verify. Yep, get transaction data only. It only has the get get transaction item activity, which update the transaction status to in progress and not successful. And in initialization doesn't have that activity. Yep, so process transaction only should be the answer for this question. I reviewed the following graphics. Based on the configuration shown in the graphic, what is the result of the execution of these activities if neither the calculator nor the snipping tool are open at runtime? Well, I have copied this workflow, so let's test and see what happens. Just make sure that if you also copy that uh, uh, workflow that both the uh, calculator and the snipping tool is not open. So here we got an error with a find element calculator activity timeout exceeded. And here in the output panel, uh, the execution ended in 7 seconds. So the error is for the find element calculator activity, timeout exceeded. Let's see if that is part of the option. All right. Though in my in my simulation it took uh, seven seconds, but this one is the close close answer to that uh, scenario. Yep. So we can see that the timeout value is different in the two activities. UiPath will throw an error after the shortest timeout value. And since the find element calculator tool has a shorter timeout value, the exception was thrown to this activity. So let's go to the next question. Which activity is valid in the condition of a retry scope? Well, let's try to see which one is the answer. Um, let's start with the find children. Oops, I am not in the activity tab. Find children. So we can see that we cannot uh, use find children in the condition. How about the on element appear? We cannot also use this. And the file exists. Not as well. <laughs> Last one is the check through activity. And this one, you can use this in the retry condition. So check through should be the correct answer. Check through. You are debugging a workflow created in the robotic enterprise framework. You set a breakpoint at the invoke init all setting workflow activity. During the debugging process, the executor the executor is shown as follow. What happens when the step over button is pressed? Executor points and X activity. Yes, this should be what will happen because step over is the, the button press. But let's check the other option here. Execution executor post. That will not happen. Executor points to the first activity inside the init all setting. Um, step over is the button press. This will only happen if the step into button was pressed. But since it's not, then this is not the answer. Executor opens the init all setting. Again, this will happen if the step into button is clicked. So the, the right answer is this one. A developer configured the properties for a click activity on an element inside the web page as shown in the following graphic. During runtime, the selector is invalid and does not match any element on the web page. What occurs when the, this click activity executes? And here, if you will observe the property of the activity, the continue on error property is set to true. So we can expect that this will not throw an error. So here, wait 30 seconds before clicking in the center of the web page. That is not possible. 
uh, timeout error occurs after 30 seconds. Again, continuum error is set to true, so this will not happen. Execute the next activity after the timeout expire. This is probably the answer. And the selector not found error occurs after 30 seconds. Again, that will not happen. So it will just execute the next activity after the timeout expire. So let's go to the next question. A developer creates a new robotic enterprise framework project in UiPath Studio and changes the value of max consecutive system exceptions to 2 in the config file. How many transaction items can be processed with status failed and error type application until the process is ended? Well, I'm, I'm still puzzled by this question. I understand that if the max consecutive system exception value is reached, like in this example is 2, then the job or the project run will stop. My concern is that if the job retries the same transaction item and fails again, so it will only process one transaction item. But I am sure that it won't be able to process more than two, more than two transaction item. So is it one or two? Uh, I think the answer should be two. <laughs> I will not consider my my the concern that I I mentioned. Yep, let's stick to two. A developer designed a process in UiPath Studio that is best suited for a simple and linear process, which Studio workflow type was used. Global exception handler, this is used for handling exceptions, so probably not this one. And then the flowchart and state machines can be used when you have a process that branches into multiple directions based on certain condition. So a sequence is the most applicable for simple and linear process. So sequence is the answer. A developer wants to create an automation that iterates through a dictionary and prints the value of each key. Which activity can iterate through a dictionary? Find children activity. This is used for UI automation element. And for each is the only option here to iterate with the dictionary and other types of collection variable. So this option is probably the correct answer. A select item activity, this is used for UI automation element, so this is wrong. And remove from collection, well technically dictionary is a collection type of variable, but the question is to iterate and removing it from the collection is probably a wrong answer to this. So the answer is for each. In order to add a row to a data table named DT reports, the developer used the add data row activity. However, UiPath Studio chose the exception add data row object reference not set to an instance of an object. And during runtime, because the data table was not initialized, to correct the error, what should the developer add to an assigned activity before the add data row? So for the two fields, it should be the data table variable type. So this one is wrong, the option two. And then in the volume field, it should be new system that data that data table. And this is our answer for that. So let's check the next question. Almost there. A developer created the following sequence. The catches block within the try catch contain the following activities. A, a log message. Properties of the try catch. There's nothing here. Properties of the retry, there's also nothing here. And the properties for the element exist activity are shown as follow. 5,000 milliseconds timeout, wait for ready is complete. And then the variable counter has a default value of 1. So based on the exhibit, what is the value of the counter variable when the target application is not open? So I copy the workflow and <laughs> let's run the test. All right, so the answer is four. And it is because on the first execution of the retry scope action, the counter variable is already incremented by one. And since the number of retries property is blank, the activity will follow the default value, which is three. And that result in an additional increment for the counter variable. 
So the answer is 4 and let's select that uh, option in here. Is there a 4? Yep, let's select that. 